Okay, welcome to today's video. I'm going to be going over the best chest exercises that you guys should be doing and the worst exercises that you guys should be avoiding. A lot of you are performing exercises which are optimal, you know, you're getting a deep stretch, you're getting a good squeeze, you're getting a good mind-muscle connection, you're getting good pumps. But a lot of you may be following some TikToker's advice, doing some goofy exercise, which is not doing anything for your chest growth, and you're wondering why you're not growing. So for those of you who are confused as to what the best chest exercises are, this is obviously based on my personal preference, my you know years as a coach and a gym bro, um, but also based on the scientific literature, which supports you know all the factors that lead to chest growth, like getting a deep stretch, like having you know constant tension, um, stability demands as well, but you know, this is a combination of my personal preferencing preferences and scientific literature. So for the majority of you, this, these chest exercises are going to be, you know, the ones that I'm going to, you know, assign to the S and A tier are going to work incredibly well for you. But there, then again, bear in mind, everyone is different. Okay. Some people like a, you know, wider grip on a bench press. Some people like a narrow grip on the bench press. Some people like to tuck their elbows in. Some people like to flare, flare their elbows out. So everyone is different. So let me know in the comments if I've missed or if you disagree or if you agree with the how I've assigned each chest exercise um, in the tier list. But without further ado, let me get on with this video so you guys can grow some big boobs. All right. So first, the criteria. Let me just move my ugly mug out the way. The main and this this basically all the recent scientific literature points towards getting a deep, painful stretch is probably the most important um factor that leads to chest growth in conjunction or in combination with high tension so if you're getting a deep stretch but the descent so the eccentric you're not really struggling then that's probably not gonna be a good exercise for you so if you are struggling if you can feel the tension in your pecs all the way down all the way up and it allows you to basically rip your chest apart at the bottom which would indicate a big stretch that is um one box that you can tick for a good chest exercise. Next is they should feel comfortable and smooth. If you are feeling your shoulder, if you get shoulder pain when you, when you do the exercise, um, if you're not getting a pump, if you're not getting a good squeeze, if it's um, you know awkward to set up or awkward, you know if you can't stabilize, if you're maybe doing a bench press or a dumbbell press, um, you know this can diminish the effectiveness of an exercise, and it will you'll find that it will place lower than you might expect in the tier list. And lastly, simple progression so that you can keep on growing and keep on getting stronger. If it is an exercise which doesn't allow you to get stronger over time, then this is also going to rank pretty low or not as high as you might think. Um, for example, uh, spoiler alert, standing cable crossovers aren't going to rank that highly because of, yes, you can get a good stretch and a good squeeze, but you won't be able to go heavier. You won't be able to progress and full stack a standing cable chest fly, right? Um, for that reason, it's not going to be the most optimal chest exercise because you cannot can't get stronger as easily and therefore you won't grow because without progressive overload you won't be able to grow right um so these are the criteria that you make make sure just so they understand how i've chosen these exercises and why i've ranked them the way i've ranked them so let me start off with the absolute okay let me make myself a bit smaller the absolute worst exercises all right number one is the hex press now i don't granted i don't have a um, picture of this, but essentially it's when you, you know, grab the dumbbells and you put them together like this and you like go down and basically there's zero range of motion. It's all triceps and front delts pretty much. Um, you're not getting a deep stretch just because you can feel a squeeze. Okay. Doesn't mean that it's targeting your chest. I can literally go like this. Hold on. Let me make myself bigger. I can literally go like this. Okay. And just squeeze my pecs and I'm getting a squeeze, but there's no tension and I'm not moving any weight. Right. That's just you know, me flexing essentially. So that's essentially what a hex press is. It's you flexing, right? Um, that, you know, this is sort of, sort of like a TikToker movement, I like to call it, where like, you'll see like a TikToker, he'll be going to Smith, uh, Smith press and he'll get a neutral grip cable attachment and he'll like attach it to the Smith uh, bar and he'll like push it up like that and be like, oh, the squeeze is so good. <laughs> like, please, Unfollow people like that, first of all. And second of all, realize that if you're not getting a deep stretch and if you're not, if your elbows aren't flared at least, you know, 45 degrees, the chest activation is not going to be optimal. And it's going to most likely just be your triceps and your front delts working. And just because you get a good squeeze, remember, pumps and squeezes aren't all that matters, right? You have to feel the tension in your pecs, feel the stretch in your pecs. 
and the hex press does not like allow you to do that. So it's going F right, right at the bottom. Similarly, the plate press where you, you know, hold a plate. And again, you'll see like TikTokers or influencers do this just to like stand out and be different, but, uh, and to like sell you on their bullshit. But, um, essentially it's, you grab a plate, whether you're doing an incline bench or a flat bench and you lie down and you just press the plate up. Right. Again, minimal tension, no stretch looks so stupid. Um, and just because you're feeling a squeeze does not mean it's a good chest exercises, right? Again, I can literally flex my pecs and get a good squeeze. So remember that avoid hex pressing, avoid plate pressing. If that's something you're doing right now, cause you've seen some, you've been misled by some, um, stupid influencer. Um, so avoid these and the next, obviously dumbbell pullover. Now this can be an effective exercise for some people, but for me and many people, you don't really feel it in your pecs. Now it's a great, um, lat movement you know, the lat dumbbell pullover where you, um, stop, you stop, um, you don't go as far back as you would to activate your pecs because, um, when you stretch all the way back, that's when you get that pec activation. So I would say it's good for like length and partials. So right at the bottom, when you're like hanging off the bench with a dumbbell and you can feel the stretch in your pecs, that's good. But for many people, you don't really feel your pec activate, um, because it's, it's not a normal line of pull right? Your, your, your chest fibers, you have, you have your upper chest and your lower chest, right? And when you're lengthening your chest like that, you're, you're not really, um, prone to recruiting that many muscle fibers. And so you won't get a pump. You won't really feel your chest activate. Um, but some of you, you know, try it out. It may work for you, but for most people I would avoid using, doing the dumbbell pullover. It's just not an effective chest exercises, uh, exercise for the majority of people. So, Although it's not the best, in my opinion, it does work for some people, you know, Arnold would do it sometimes. Um, and if you do it properly as well, for many beginners, for many people, it's awkward to set up, it's awkward to execute properly. And for that reason, because it's not only not that effective based on my experience, but also it's awkward to do, it's going to get a D rating. Now, let me go on to bench pressing. Okay. So as much hate as a flat bench press gets okay for you know not targeting your incline chest your incline incline uh, your upper chest is all that matters so only do uh, incline pressing now while that is good advice i would say for the majority of people who need to grow their upper chest rather than their uh, mid mid uh, mid fibers and lower chest fibers that doesn't mean the flat bench press is a bad exercise i would do the flat bench uh, for the first year or two years of my training, I remember. And, you know, I grew a lot of muscle because it is a compound movement. It recruits a lot of muscle. Um, it, it recruits your, your front delt, your, um, your triceps and your, and your chest to a certain extent. Now, of course, you know, unlike dumbbells, for example, you can get a deep stretch, the flat bench press, you stop once it hits your chest, right? So although it does offer high tension, which is great, and you will grow from, you know, constant tension on your pecs, your metabolites being like ripped apart, um, you won't be able to get that deep stretch, which based on the literature is very important for chest growth. So, you know, that's going to make it a, a, a B, a B tier, in my opinion. Um, you guys might think a B is pretty high for those of you who think that no, it's not because flat bench press is the foundation, um, foundational compound movement. It is a great muscle builder, great strength builder. Um, and you know, for a beginner, it's a perfect exercise to do, but as you, you know, as you mature in your gym journey, you'll realize that in order to optimize chest growth, you will need to um, choose an exercise which allows you to get a deep stretch um, and preferably a more of an incline variation. Um, with that said, onto my next exercise, the incline bench press also gets to be because this is highly, highly based on my preference. I do not, you know, based on the stability demand of the incline bench press, like the flat bench press, where you have to worry about stabilizing rather than worry about focusing on your chest, uh, moving through a full range of motion for that reason it's getting a B, but also I don't get a good ch uh, chest contraction with incline bench press. For some reason, it just feels like I'm like, I'm benching really. Like I'm just like struggling to get the weight up. I don't can't lift them as heavy. Um, my pecs don't activate as well, but you know, it is obviously better for uh, upper pec development, upper pec development. Um, and some of you might think that just because it's an incline press means it doesn't incorporate your mid lower, lower pecs, but it does. Okay. It does. So, um, for that reason, 
I'm giving it a B as well because I would say both flat bench press and incline bench press are basically the same, but flat bench press um, incorporates your mid lower fibers better and incline bench press incorporates your upper um, peg fibers better. But other than that, then you need to stabilize. You don't really feel your chest contract that well, in my opinion. Um, I'm giving it a B. Decline bench press, I'm giving it a C, man. If you're doing decline bench press, just do flat bench press or even incline bench press. Those target your mid to lower pecs, you know, quite effectively. And you need to definitely, definitely don't isolate your mid lower pecs because that should not be a priority for any of you guys. Um, and even if it is, you can do a flat bench press or an incline bench press to do that, to get um, some upper chest um, activation as well. Decline bench press, yes, it targets the mid lower pecs, but it's even less of a range of motion than the flat bench press, which you know is very important for muscle growth. The, the more an exercise allows you to get a full range of motion, the better it is. Um, you know, the flat bench press doesn't allow you to do that because the bar stops in your chest. Same with the incline bench press. But the decline bench press is even less of a range of motion just because of the angle at which the bench, you know, lies. Um, so yeah, this is getting a C because one, you don't really need to isolate your lower mid pecs that much. Two, the range of motion is really bad, which is renders it a bad exercise uh, because you're not going to get a full stretch, right? Remember back to the criteria. Okay. Can we squeeze my, my face in here? Oh God. Okay, we can't. Um, so dumbbell press variations, unlike the reason that these are getting A's is because of the simple fact that what answer, you can get a deep stretch and a full range of motion. That is incredibly important if you're trying to grow your chest. So if you're thinking about whether I should do a flat bench press or a flat dumbbell press, always opt in for the flat dumbbell press. Okay. It provides a deeper pec stretch, but similar to benching using a barbell bench, for example, or, or, or dumbbell bench, it requires stability, right? You're going to have to balance the weight on the way down. You're going to have to get the weight up. It can be annoying to get a weight up. You know, you might need a friend to help you push the weight up. So when comparing that to say a machine press, for example, that's where it would lose because of the stability of the balance. But in my opinion, because it's allows you to converge, right? A, a flat bench press or a barbell bench press, your, your path is fixed. You're pushing up your hands, stay in the same position, but when you're doing a flat dumbbell press or an incline dumbbell press, you can converge your hands so that you're getting, you're activating, you're shortening the chest fibers, right? Because if you're doing like a flat bench press, yes, um, the range of motion at the bottom is incorporating the fibers optimally, but at the top, because you're not converging, you're not getting that, you're not getting that squeeze. Um, that means that, you know, the bottom part of the movement is more important than the top part of the movement. And it's more effective for the bottom part of the movement is where, you know, the majority of the chest activation happens when you're doing a flat bench press or incline bench press. Um, whereas when you're using dumbbells, the whole range of motion is, is, you know, you're getting full chest activation because of that convergence at the top. Um, which is another reason why it's an A, but also the main reason is you can get a deep stretch, as deep of a stretch as you can possibly get because there's no nothing that's like holding you back with, with for example when the bar touches your chest when you're benching um and the only differences between these two is you know one is more effective for the mid lower ch chest fibers and one is more effective for the upper chest fibers me personally i don't know i i really like both of these i think they're both equally as effective it just depends on what you want to grow right most of you probably would should opt in for the incline double press just because you need more um to, to, you need to develop your upper chest more. But other than that, they're both very incredible exercises. And on pretty much every other week, I would I would do an incline dumbbell press or a flat dumbbell press. Um, and, you know, the stability demand, yes, it can be annoying. Um, but I feel like, you know, it, you should be able to, you know, manage a, a free weight, right? In in real life, when you're carrying something or when you're, you're lifting something, you want to be able, it's, you, not everything is, machines don't translate to real life. So you should be, you know, the stability demand of it is also going to give you some sort of life advantage, if that, if that makes sense. Um, also, if your dumbbells don't go that heavy in the gym, that can limit you on progressive overload wise. So that's also a limiting factor when it comes to dumbbells. But enough yapping. Next is the goated chest exercise. You found it guys. S tier machine chest press. Now, obviously, I haven't specified that can be the hammer press, that can be a 
um, prime press, that can be a seated incline press, that can be a Smith machine press, that can be a, just a classic flat machine press. Any machine chest press, in my opinion, is going to give you the best bang for your buck. Offers a deep pec stretch. You can get a deep as possible stretch. Boom. Tick. High tension, constant tension all the way throughout through the movement. You're going to feel your, you know, metabolizing your chest being ripped apart. You're constantly going to feel your chest, you know, it's going to feel like a workout, right? Through the full range of motion. And you can easily overload it. Just, you know, put the pin lower or add, add more plates, add more weight. Whereas, you know, in dumbbells and barbells, um, you might have to like, you can't incrementally increase the weight. When you're an advanced lifter, you're not gonna be able to stack on 10 pounds every week, right? You wanna do slow incremental increases in weight, which the machine chest press allows you to do. And it takes away the stability demand. You don't have to worry about balancing or, you know, wobbling down on the way down or like one arm, you know, stronger than the other. A machine chest press is a fixed path so that you can just focus completely on your chest, squeezing, stretching, um, controlling the eccentric and you don't have to worry about balancing, right? So next time you're wondering whether I should do a bench press or a dumbbell press, if there's a flat machine press or an incline machine chest press, choose that. It's always going to be the safer bet. Now, body weight exercises. I thought I would, you know, mention this because a lot of you may not have access to the gym. You may on, you may be on holiday or you may just be, you know, a fan of push-ups and dips. And so here's my take on them. Dips are great, right? They give a very, very good deep pec stretch. Okay. But you do have to stabilize, which is going to knock it down a level. And I found personally that it really can be dangerous for your shoulders. If you guys are prone, any of you are prone to shoulder injuries or issues or pain, this is a no, no, like stay away from dips. If you have bad shoulders, which is me. So this is why it gets a C, right? Normally you would get a B, but because of that shoulder pain, uh, risk it's getting a C and pushups again, I, I grew a bunch of muscle doing pushups when I was a beginner. Like on my holiday, I wouldn't have a gym. I would do pushups. I'd come back. I'd like, I would lose weight, build, I built muscle. Everyone was like, whoa, Frankie, like you're not fat anymore. Like, what did you do? I was like, I just did pushups every day. So pushups are great. Okay. But obviously as you get stronger and if you want to build more muscle, they're not great. Okay. Because you won't be able to, you can put a, you can get your buddy to put a plate on your back or your backpack on your back, but eventually you're going to get too strong that you won't be able to progressively overload and you won't be able to grow which renders it a B tier, right? Otherwise, you know, push-ups are great. Basically push-ups are great, but because you can't progressively overload uh, past a certain point, then, you know, they're not going to be so great, right? Okay. Next pec fly variation. So we've covered all the compound movements, the presses now for the chest flies or the isolation movements, which is just chest, right? You want to have a good incline press, a good flat press and a good isolation chest fly to just target the chest. And so here is my take on the three um, most known variations, right? Number one, cable crossovers. I touched on this earlier in this video, great stretch, great tension, great pump, great squeeze, all those things. But because you're standing up and you're leaning forward a bit, you're never going to be able to full stack that and do a proper like range of motion, proper sets, proper reps, right? Just because of the fact of that you are you, you lack stability in the standing position, right? Whereas if you're seated, you your your back's against um your back is against the pad, and it's a fixed range of motion. So you you can just worry about oh shit your um your pecs doing the work. But if you're standing, you have to stabilize. You you might you know it might be so heavy that like the weight pulls you back. I don't know if every any any of you have ever noticed that. So for that reason, it's getting a B. Always, I would say mostly, um if it's available to you, always do a seated cable fly or chest fly option. If it's, if it's available to you like this next one, seated cable pec fly. Now I love this movement. This movement is insane. If any of you guys have a gym, which um, offers that that's great. But the reason that's an A is because it's not as read readily available to everyone. Um, I know most of you won't have a seated cable pec fly machine. It's pretty, you know, only like fancy gyms have that. You can always set up a bench at the cable stack, but then you can get in people's way and you'll just look like a, you know, you just look, look like a dickhead, like doing that, like probably, I mean, I don't know how empty your gym is. Um, but if you can do that, great movement. I would honestly put it on the same level as pec deck, but just because it's not as available as a pec deck, it's getting an A, but stability, you don't have to worry about like the weight pulling you back or like, you know, 
it's not awkward like a standing cable crossover is. You can get stronger on it because you just have to worry about um, your pecs doing the work um, and not balancing and not like tensing your core. Um, and it gets you a deep, deep stretch. Just imagine like it, it, there's no really uh, limit to how deep of a stretch you can get and a great squeeze at the top. And obviously, um, you know, direct tension to the pecs. Um, there's no tricep involvement. There's no front delt involvement, right? Um, it's just your pecs, which is the great thing about pec flies. And lastly, pec deck. Okay. Pec deck is my personal favorite. It's probably what I do. I do alternate between seated cable pec fly and pec deck. As I said, you could put them on the same level. They could be both S or A's, but just because pec decks are pretty much in every gym and they're a great exercise, they're stable, um, optimal pec engagement, great deep stretch, awesome squeeze. The pumps are obviously go crazy whenever you do the pec deck. And the constant tension, you can feel your chest really controlling the weight on the eccentric, nothing else. For that reason, I'm giving it an S, okay? Just because it's the best isolation movement, in my opinion, and everyone has a pec deck, right? Um, so you can't go wrong with that. So, conclusion. Here is a basically a breakdown of the best exercises, in my opinion, and the exercises that are going to be available to the most of you guys. A lot of you guys don't have the hammer press or the prime press or all these fancy ones that you see in all these American influencer gyms. Unfortunately, you know, those, those exercises are very good. Those machines are very good. Um, but a lot of you will have a Smith machine, right? A lot of you will have some sort of chest press machine. A lot of you, all of you will have a dumbbell uh, bench with a dumbbell rack and a pec deck. Um, so these are my exercises that I do because my gym is very limited. So I do incline machine or incline dumbbell plus flat machine or flat dumbbell plus pec deck or seated cable fly. And I'll do two sets to failure, two sets to failure, and then one set to failure on the pec deck or the cable fly um, with a rest pause. So, you know, once I fail, say I get like five reps, I'll be like, okay, let me take a 10 second rest. And then I'll go back in and get a couple more reps. So I'll do seven sets, uh, seven reps to failure. That's typically how I structure my chest days. Um, I'll do like chest and calves, um, typically, and then I'll train my chest once every four or five days. Um, I'll keep the rep range low, six to 10 reps, train very hard, very low volume. Your chest damages very easily. Um, you do not need more than that. This is the recipe, by the way, uh, that I, how I grew my chest, as you could tell, you know, let me, can I, let me go back, look at my, you know, chest genetics, right? They're not exactly good. My genetics overall aren't good, but my chest really struggles to grow. And, um, as soon as I you know, just focused on low volume, high intensity, basically what you see here, um, my chest exploded. So let me know what you think, you know, do you disagree? Do you agree with the chest ex exercises I've, I've um, given? Let me know as well, what hidden machines are out there that we all need to put us on like to those machines. Um, so we can start doing them and check out the link in the description for free, for, you know, free training programs, meal plans, community, um, aesthetics club where you have a, access to a bunch of free courses on how to build muscle, lose fat. Um, my one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, my gym merch, barbell apparel, go check that out in the link in the description, but thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.